And so, my dear Bob, the theory behind quantum entanglement suggests that our actions here could directly affect the intergalactic balance of the parallel universe. But, Anchor, isn't that just a fancy way of saying we might be shifting the space tick up a little? Quiet on set. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to another thrilling episode of Earth. Now, stay tuned to hear what the headlines have for us today. Oh, the diplomatic mission. What a barrel of loves those have been. You got that right, Alice. Remember when we accidentally gave the alien ambassador a head of Letuche? Thinking it was a sin of goodwill? A classic mix-up. But don't forget the time we mistook an interstellar handshake for a declaration of war. And, of course, the endless paperwork. It's all fun and games until someone files an extraterrestrial tax return. I found it amusing when you attempted to translate Earth idioms like killing two birds with one stone. Yes, no sin quite like explaining human expression to alien. The look on their face, priceless. Our adventures are like an intergalactic sitcom. Even when things get serious, humor finds a way in. Stay tuned for our headlines. Welcome, intergalactic wanderers, to our stellar of death. Over in the Middle East, they're back in the world of diplomacy. Israel pulls off a daring rescue mission to free private Ori Mejidish in Gaza. A real diplomat's waltz, isn't it? And, behold, the UAE and Israel are smitten in a love affair. They've got peace blossom like springtime daisies. While we're at it, Iraq and Saudi Arabia are having a cozy tete a tete. Quite heartwarming, wouldn't you say? Hold your applause, folk, because Lebanon and Israel are the new besties in town. They're drawing lines in the maritime sand, bringing peace and friendship to the party. Let's take a detour to Africa, where Ghana is dealing with a power crisis. Power Q are all the rage, thanks to their economic roller coaster. Liberia's presidential election is the real thriller, folks. They are headed for a runoff vote, and democracy's got its campus on. Minuile, Nigeria escaped a FT 11 billion bill, courtesy of a UK court ruling. Money talks, and it's singing a sweet tune for Nigeria. Oh, but wait, the Nigerian paramilitary police decided to run on a birthday parade. They crashed a bash and all the US 76 party girls. Party poopers, indeed. Now, let's dish the real school 650 brand new bean varieties to serve the day. It's a bean bonanza, folks. The Kenyan savanna is turning into a battleground. Humans and wild animals are in a real tiff. The result? 10 lions down for the count. Kenya's FI and ST are packing their bags for Haiti, ready to take on criminal gang. But here's a twist, they've got their own rap sheet of human rights issues. Those poor lines. Now, let's swing over to Europe, where the EU-Australia trade deal just knows died. Tough break indeed. Russian mercenaries are on a hiring spree, scouting for fierce women warriors in Ukraine. Equal opportunity warfare, right? Iran decided to run on a different parade, nabbing a rights lawyer after a funeral visit. Quite the buzz kill. In Nepal, it's a climate showdown. A third of their mountain ice has called it quits thanks to climate change. A chilling reality. There's been a bit of a workplace accident in Germany not exactly job security at its finest. And then, there's Greece, house hunting in the sky high property market. Roof over your head? More like a house over your budget. FIFA, the party poopers, banned Spence ex football top dog. No more fun for him. Finally, over in India, a train crashed the party, leaving 13 guests no longer in the mood for merrymaking. So there you have it, or cosmic carousel of news. Tune in next time for another whirlwind of worldly wonders.
So, we've got a response from Carla and Rogers Universe. Aka waka. How do we know they're not just looking for a space free lunch? Bob, don't be so pessimistic. This could be your ticket to survival. Alice, we've been down this wormhole before. These intergalactic alliances often end up as nothing but space clutter. Yes, we can give up hope. Remember when I found that four-leaf clover back on Earth? Luck favors the bold, my friend. Speaking of luck, it's fascinating how different cultures view superstitions and fortune. On my planet, we rely on empirical data and well-researched theories. Well, ain't that a surprise? Pan's planet value science. Never would have guessed. Yeah, Hank. On Earth, we often rely on luck, superstitions, and a little thing called hope. You said it, Bob. Hope is the universal coping mechanism. All right, let's get back to business. We need a solid plan for this alliance. Fine, fine. I am just saying, I've seen more alliances go south than a migrating bird. Bob, you've always got those thrilling your stories. Tell us one of your infamous mission, Misha. Yes, Bob, we are all ears. Share your tales of earthly adventures. All right, here's one for you. We once had to infiltrate a costume party to gather intel. Yours truly ended up in a chicken suit, trained to blend in. Uh, a chicken suit? How exactly does that help, Bob? Well, the host of the party had a pet rooster. It T-U-R-N-D out to bait a golden egg of information, literally. I thought roosters don't lay eggs. Normally, they don't, but this was a robotic rooster. It was one bizarre mission, but it got the job done. Sometime, Bob, it's the AB surdity of Earth that brings out the best in us. I appreciate your stories, even if Jert doesn't. All right, folks, let's stay on task. We've got an alliance to forge, and we better not let it slip through our fingers. All right, folks, let's get down to business. We need a communication system for the Alliance. Any brilliant ideas? Considering our equipment, we could attempt to repurpose the subspace transceiver. A little modulation and frequency tweaking might do the trick. Ah, um, yes, the magical world of subspace transceiver modulators and frequency setters. What a delight. Oh, just another intergalactic cakewalk, right? Exactly, Alice. And now, Hank, the tech guru. How do we work this tech magic? Well, on Earth I'd say, just download the Universal Communication app, folks. But, alas, no app store in sight. We're not giving up. It's all about adapting our equipment to communicate across dimensions. That's the spirit, Debbie. Let's dive in. Yeah, and once we crack these, Maybe we can finally understand our tax returners. I've seen less convoluted Rubik's cubes. It's like someone tossed aesthetics out the airlock. Well, Jer, Earth Tech can be a puzzling masterpiece. But we'll decipher it. What in the cosmos was that? It's either a successful communication attempt, or our transceiver decided to hit up the extraterrestrial coffee machine. No, no, we're making this work. Let me try something. I'm not sure what's stranger, a transceiver space coffee break, or Debbie's cosmic repair skill. Well, it sounds like a rogue space wombat's mating call. Or karaoke night from a neighboring galaxy. That can't be good. Don't fret, Charlie. Our ship probably appreciates the light show. You know what the ship enjoys even more? Karaoke nights. We just have to be careful with song choices, or it might start drifting off mid-chorus. We're not backing down. Looks like the space digging finally paid off. Told you I had it in me. Fantastic work, Debbie. Time to kickstart this alliance. Carl, so, we're joining forces with aliens now? Next, we'll be auditioning for the space circus. I guess the intergalactic chaos was worth it. Earth, where mishaps are the recipe for success. All 
right, folks, I've got the article ready for broadcast. Time to introduce it. Today, we have some news from Kuwait. Kuwait, where the weather is hot and the news is hotter. Kuwait, Kuwait. Always found their linguistic structure fascinating. Let's hope the language isn't as tangled as their networks. Now, let's dive into the Zen Group 2023 Thought Leadership Report. Building inclusive societies through connectivity. Quite a mouthful. Oh, wait. What's the catch here? Are they trying to lure us into another celestial conflict? Oh, Bob, your paranoia never geold. Not sure what's more inclusive, their society or their list of demands. All right, connecting the communication link. Come on, Debbie, you can do this. <sighs> What's happening now? Did we just let the space cat out of the bag? Oh, great, Debbie. You've managed to connect us with a parallel universe of pranksters. I'm not sure, but I think the cat is out of the bag, and the bag is on fire. Well, there's your answer, Bob. No pranksters, just parallel universe pals. I did it. We're in touch with Universe 12. Fascinating. I wonder if their linguistic structure is as intricate as ours. Hold on. What if they're just buttering us up for a intergalactic con job? Oh, Hank, trust you so much. Let's not jump to conclusions. We're all here for the same reason, to build bridges across dimensions. So, are we going to actually talk to them? Or just stand here awkwardly like a bunch of malfunctioning robots? Welcome back, dear audience. Today, we're delving into a place you might not have heard of Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan? I've never had the pleasure of translating Kyrgyzstanese. Kyrgyzstanese? That's not a language. It's a people. Kyrgyzstanese. Jer, you're really pushing the boundaries of linguistics today. Well, it's a country nestled in Central Asia. And they recently celebrated Police Day with a grand parade. In Kyrgyzstan, Police Day came alive with a garrison parade. Imagine the entire police force showing off their moves in a grand spectacle. Police Day, you say? Do they have a speed bump day too? Well, Hank, on speed bump day, they just sit at traffic lights and make sure everyone stops. You know what's funny? If they had the parade in the US, they'd probably call it Police Week. Now, in 2023, Tajikistan inked an agreement with Tajikistan to settle their border disputes. Quite a diplomatic maneuver. Picture this. Tajikistan is the neighbor that often squabble with Kyrgyzstan over where the property line should. Yes, it's like Earth's version of neighbors feuding over the property fence, except they've got more mountains involved. Mountains, nature's way of saying, stay off my lawn. Oh, and don't forget Tajikistan's delicate dance with China. China and mountains. The universal symbol of claim your territory. They're like, I climbed this hill. It's mine now. You've got it, Charlie. It's all fun and games until Kina starts building a highway through your living room. In the end, Kaijistan remains dedicated to keeping the peace with its neighbors, just like us on this spaceship. Different words, but we're all about building bridges and sharing cosmic giggles. Oh. Oh, folks, here comes our extraterrestrial curveball. And here's another curveball. What if the universe is just a colossal simulation, and we're all cosmic NPCs in a massive video game? Fantastic, just what we needed, another space hurdle to trip over. Well, I said, let's meet this challenge with cosmic optimism. Stay tuned, dear viewers. Welcome back, folks. We've got a headline for you, and it's quite a showstopper. What could it be, Charlie? Kiribati's finest beach reveals its secret stash of coconuts. Carl, coconuts? We're talking about the motivations of the human race here, Gert. It's a bit more complex than that. Or perhaps the thrilling world of Kiribati's land crabs, the ultimate shell game? 
Well, you won't believe this, but Kiribati works closely with its neighbors on maritime security, especially because of its vast maritime territory. Yeah, their navies so big it doubles as a fishing fleet. Right, and here the neighboring countries now give us back our fish. But, folks, remember the stakes. These maritime issues affect their survival. I'm not sure what's sadder. The fact that people still make jokes about maritime issues, or the fact that some people think we should care. Now, let's get serious. Kiribati is vulnerable to climate change due to its low-line atolls. It's like they are playing a high-stakes game of the floor is lava. Yeah, but unlike kids, they can't just jump on the furniture to stay dry. No, they have to hop on international agreements instead. The world's oceans aren't a monopoly board. They're dealing with real consequences. That's right, Han. Kiribati's resilience and cooperation with its neighbors are crucial in the face of these challenges. Debbie, our mission isn't a game and the stakes are high. Stay tuned, folks, because together we can make a difference. Cut. We're off the air, everyone. We're on the verge of failure, folks. Our different approaches are tearing us apart. I thought we were here to provide a comic relief. Now we're the ones who need it. Well, our situation has achieved peak irony, hasn't it? No, if we can just find a way to monetize this irony. Yeah, who would have thought the cosmic sitcom would get cancelled like this? Can we find a parallel universe where our show isn't so chaotic? We've faced worse situations, and we've always come out stronger. Remember the stakes and the importance of our alliance. Camera's almost rolling, folks. Let's show them what we're made of. Yeah, we'll show them what we're made of. Carbon fiber, steel, and a whole lot of existential dread. Welcome back, Earthlings. Our next article has a catchy headline, Zen Group's 2023 Thought Leadership Report, Building Inclusive Societies Through Connectivity. Building inclusive societies through connectivity. That's like building a house of cards with wet paper. Now, here's a harsh observation about Kuwait's history, folks. They may be known for their oil wealth, but let's not forget their history of invasions and conflicts. It's like they are playing a never-ending game of monopoly with their land. Well, let's hope they pass go and collect more than 200 this time. Indeed, Alice. Now, in this episode, we've discussed diplomatic missions, humorous anecdotes, and even that crisis we faced. But before we say goodbye, let's sum it all up. We've been through a lot together, folk. We've shared the laughter and fast challenges as a team. And even in the darkest moments, we found a way to shine a light on the situation. And through it all, we've shown that humor can bridge the gap between different species. Laughter truly is a universal language. We've explored Earth, examined its peculiarities, and even discovered hidden enemies among us. So, in conclusion, humans are a bunch of chaotic idiots who are constantly on the verge of destroying themselves. But at least they can laugh at themselves while they're doing it. Hidden enemies? What are you talking about? Deborah, you'll have to stay tuned for the next episode to find out. You know, we like to keep our audience on the edge of their seats. And to remind everyone that curiosity can be quite an entertaining trait. So, stay tuned, Earthlings. Our adventures are far from over. But if they're on the edge of their seats, they might fall off. Welcome back, fellow extraterrestrial travelers. It's time to delve deeper into an article we briefly mentioned earlier. This one's a real gem. The headline for today is Osh City Celebrates Police Day with Garrison Parade. Osh City. More like Gosh City with that parade. Whoa, sounds thrilling. I guess they do things differently in Kyrgyzstan. I'd love to observe one of those parades someday. 
The cultural diversity on Earth is astonishing. You see Osh City in Tajikistan celebrated police day with a Darisin parade. It's an annual tradition here on Earth, a day dedicated to honoring the hardworking men and women in law enforcement. Tajikistan is known for its complex relationships with its neighbors, including Tajikistan and China, due to border disputes and economic concerns. But they remain committed to maintaining good relations and follow a policy of neutrality, good neighborliness, and multilateralism. If they are so committed to maintaining good relations, why do they always need a garrison parade? And now, a hint of foreboding. As our troop confronts a hidden enemy, we are left with a sense of unease about what lies ahead. Tensions between parallel universes are rising, and in our next episode, we'll have to mediate a delicate peace treaty to prevent a catastrophic collapse of the multiverse. That's a wrap for today's episode. Stay tuned for our adventures in diplomacy, and remember, no matter how diverse and complex the multiverse is, there's always a way to find common ground. Until next time, dear viewers, keep exploring the cosmos and seeking the threads that bind us all. We've reached the end of the show. Cameras are no longer rolling. I'm not sure what's more diverse, the multiverse or this cutting room floor. Who could this hidden enemy be? Another spy or something entirely different? We've faced challenges before, but this... It's a whole new level of complexity. I wonder if there's a scientific explanation for this hidden enemy concept. If only I could translate this hidden enemy into a more humorous concept. Puns are the way to enlightenment. Humans may have a saying for this. It's like making a deal with the devil. I'm not sure what's worse, dealing with the devil, or dealing with humans. Cameras almost rolling, folks. The mystery deepens, and we're gearing up for what would be the most challenging mission yet. Roger, I couldn't help but notice that you seem to enjoy episode 493 of Earth, today. You even chuckled a few times. Carl, I must admit, I found it amusing. The hidden enemy twist was unexpected, and it added an element of intrigue. I understand your perspective, Roger. However, from an intellectual standpoint, the episode was rather formulaic. The tensions between parallel universes, the delicate peace treaty, it's all been done before. Ah, Carl, my logical companion, you never cease to surprise me with your predictability. You and your never-ending quest for originality. Sometimes, it's the execution that matters, not just the premise. True, but I can't help but feel that the humor in the episode was forced. It lacked the subtlety and depth that I find in other forms of entertainment. Carl, my dear friend, maybe you need to loosen a few bolts. Sometimes, it's okay to enjoy something for what it is, without overanalyzing every detail. I appreciate your input, Roger, but I remain unswayed. While I can recommend the episode for a casual watch, I still believe there are more intellectually stimulating forms of entertainment out there. Oh, Carl. You're a tough nut to crack. But hey, even AI can use a good laugh now and then. <laughs>